Hey, Amber, do you want a Capri Sun? No. All right, your loss. YouTube? What are you doing here, you silly little guy? Welcome to Tuesday. If I showered yesterday, I'm definitely not showering today. So it's a beanie day. Or as you Canadians call it, a toque. I wasn't incredibly impressed with how my camera setup operated yesterday. So we're gonna upgrade from this setup to this setup. Let's break it down. At the core of it all is the Panasonic GH5 and a Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter lens. Both have image stabilization, which makes handheld footage look a little bit less shaky. The camera may look a little bit larger because it's attached to a battery grip, which allows it to go inside of this small rig half cage. The cage lets me rig things to it like a Sound Devices Mix Pre 3, which is being fed from a Sennheiser G4 wireless lavalier microphone. The lav allows me to be anywhere and still get pretty great audio. Honestly, this whole upgrade is supposed to make the audio sound better, so hopefully it does, but honestly, it's so heavy that it's really unwieldy to carry with my tiny little arms. Shouldn't have skipped arm day. And like every other body part day. But we'll still use it, see if it works. All right, let's do some actual work. And before the batteries on my lav mic die and I get no audio for this entire day. At some point in February, I'm going to go to Vince's house uh, for a little bit of a convention. This convention is a replacement for Adepticon that unfortunately has gotten canceled two years in a row. Now I've already hung out with Vince and Sam and John once before and what we did last time was we all painted a joint diorama. And we want to do that again this time but instead with sci-fi. Now I need to prepare two things for this convention. I need to convert one of the models to look like one of the members of the Three Musketeers and I also need to 3D sculpt a plinth. Now, not just any plinth, it needs to be a half circle that is sliced into four pizza slices, each one of us getting a pizza slice. Now, I really have no idea how to 3D sculpt, and I've dabbled before, and I've always kind of just reasoned that it's just too hard to do and it's not worth my time. But this time is different. Now, normally if I'm going to do something, I like to do the path of least resistance. In this case, I would use SketchUp to 3D design these things because I've used SketchUp in the past. But I want to do things right. So I spoke with my buddy Trent, who is much wiser than me when it comes to 3D sculpting. And he said that I should look into using Blender. And I should watch the one hour beginner course on the Blending Guru YouTube channel. And so that's what I'm going to do. Hopefully it works out. I'm beginning to think Trent recommended this video series just because he's another Aussie. Today we're learning Blender. What if I stuck it to Trent and I 3D sculpted a shrimp on the Barbie, painted it, and sent it to him? <laughs> All right, enough messing around. Back to the video series. It's actually really good. After about three hours of watching tutorials and diving around Google, I have this. But there's a problem. Ideally, both myself, John, Sam, and Vince will all have a piece of pie like this, and when you put them all together, it'll make a nice little half circle. Each base has a little cutout for the model's base to sit into nice and flush. But the current problem right now is that if we want to go all D'Artagnan on this, you want the swords to cross in the middle. And at the moment, the edge of the base to the middle of this little pie piece is about 58, 57 millimeters which is way longer than any sword in the scale that we're currently operating in. So we have a few options. We could just cut the end off here and shorten it, or we could ditch the idea of having an inset base so the model could really stand anywhere it wanted to on the pie crust. But I asked the boys what they want to do, and in the meantime, I'll do something else. Amber, you're leaving me for four hours today. What are you doing? I'm going to get my hair dyed. What color? Probably purple. Seeing as how it's about lunchtime, I suppose I'll just eat some lunch and I unfortunately have to eat alone today. Just kidding, I'm not alone. I got little puppies. Afterwards, we'll set about trying to convert Inquisitor Greyfax into something a little bit more French. <laughs> wee wee. Does anyone else sing songs to their dogs, like to the tune of like very well-known songs? Crushy, you're a baby boy. I love you, you fuzzy toy. Do you want a song too? 
We'll do the song off camera. Just to spare the viewers. With a lonely lunch out of the way, it was time to get some real hobby work done. With some assembly out of the way, it was time for some actual conversion. And the first thing I wanted to deal with was the raised sword arm. The current arm is more pointed down and the shoulder trim gets in the way. So I began to trim back the shoulder trim and test it each time, removing little bit by little bit as to not remove more than I needed to remove. Once the arm fit nicely, I could start worrying about what kind of sword I was actually going to use. I chopped the arm off at the wrist with the intention of using a bit that was a hand already holding a sword. So I grabbed some bits out of my bit collection and began to look through, starting with the Empire bits that had lots of hands holding swords, but I had kind of a problem. My chunky Empire hands are too large, so we're gonna need to do something a little bit different, and I think I have the perfect solution. The answer's kind of obvious, honestly. It's just Sister of Battle bits. You know, it's kind of funny because people say two things about GW models. One, that they get larger and larger as time goes on, but also their heroic scale, meaning their hands and their heads are bigger, making painting easier. But it's kind of funny that in this case, bits that are well over two decades older than Grayfax herself are way too large, which suggests that maybe the hands are getting smaller and the models are getting taller. Your guess is as good as mine. Also, Grayfax is a female. Maybe that has something to do with it. Pay no attention to the fact that I'm clipping these bits out of sprues that are totally unused. That's a problem for future Scott to solve. I found a sword blade that I liked and a hand and a handle that I liked and I wanted to put them together. So I chopped off all of the unnecessary bits that I didn't need. The part for the hand that I found had this lovely long glove on it. So I actually chopped off more of Grayfax's arm so I could use that glove. And when put all together, it looks Pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy with that. Sorry to interrupt the Grayfax conversion, but I think Amber just got home, which means her hair also just got home. What is? Do you like it? It's different. I like it. It looks like <laughs> okay. some sexy sci-fi chick, and I'm into that. Fincy V let me know that the three slash four musketeers represent pretty standard characters in a story. You have the veteran, the cleric, the young hotshot, and also the swashbuckler. Or just the swashbuckler if you're not Sean Connery. I was assigned the cleric, so with a bit from the retributor kit that rhymed nice, I glued on a lovely tome into the left hand. After removing the crossbow, it felt like she needed a little bit more going on. I also glued on Grayfax's shoulder pad over that arm to kind of blend the conversion in with the normal kit. And aside from a little bit of green stuff filling in the armpit, this conversion is complete. Hopefully I did Alexander Dumas proud. All right, with the Grayfax conversion done and 4 p.m. quickly approaching, the last thing we need to do is just take some pictures and video of this for the vlog. And this is a good opportunity to kind of show you where I actually shoot video and photos. It's in my workshop. Pay no mind to the uh, axe on the ground there. I kind of converted my carpentry area into a workshop. And it's nice because I don't have to set up this stuff ever. It's just always ready to go. A big, nice, soft light. Unfortunately, that's kind of uh, slowing down the carpentry projects, but at least it gives me this kind of efficiency. One thing that's interesting about doing photography and videography for Grayfax is that she has a downward facing head and also a, a brim over her hat so her entire face is in shadow and so how I might deal with this is I might take a little uh, light like this LED and with very slight power I might point it right at the backdrop to bounce it up and to give her 
some more fill, but just like a really slight amount. I don't want it to be obvious. I don't want it to be front lit. I just want a little bit more fill on her face. All right, that's gonna wrap up day number two. I'm glad we got some hobbying in because yesterday was all just a bunch of admin and computer work. Actually, tomorrow, I'm also gonna get some hobbying in. I have to actually convert another model for another collaborative project that I'm a part of, so stay tuned for that. If you guys like this video style, let me know in the comment section below. I'm having fun getting to try out this new format of making videos. If you wanna support the channel, there are a bunch of links down in the description that will enable you to do that if you so choose. Subscribe or die, but most importantly, don't forget to Hey, man!